First off, what is a NAS? What does it take to set up a NAS for yourself? What is a two and a half or 10 gigabit network? What is a network switch? All of this is very overwhelming and confusing, but if I can do it, so can you. In this video, we're gonna go step by step on how long it takes and how you can do it for yourself if you're a regular Joe like me. Last week I had an SSD go corrupt on me for the first time ever and it was devastating. $10,000 worth of client projects on it, 20 hours put into project files that were just automatically erased overnight. So it was time for me to finally make this switch. Ugreen reached out at the right time with the DXB 4800 plus and again it was overwhelming. I'm like what even is this in the email? But it was right when my SSD had gone corrupt so it seemed like a no-brainer to switch my photography system over um, to have double backups. As of last week I had everything on two terabyte SSDs and I had stacks of them. I had some older hard disk drives just like in enclosures that I would use externally. I even had some thumb drives and honestly it wasn't the best way to operate a business. I had this idea in my head that setting up a NAS was like super time intensive. It was also going to be like really expensive to buy all the drives that go in the bays um, but really it's the opposite. Like I got this done in a short amount of time and now my systems are set up for life. The max storage capacities on these is 136 terabytes. So as mentioned, I might be good for a while and maybe even a lifetime. And then also it's not really expensive. What's expensive is when I go to Amazon for every trip or every time an SSD, like a two terabyte fills up, um, I just go buy a new one. And for every two terabytes I'm buying of SSD space, it's like 250 Canadian dollars. So as promised, let's set this up step by step. I have 12 steps for you. And then at the end, I'll tell you how long this all took me. Step one, I had to go to YouTube and educate myself on what the heck a 2.5 versus 10 gigabit network was, what a network switch was, and quick Quickly how to set it up and what I need to buy on Amazon. Big thank you to Space Rex on YouTube because he made this process so easy. In the description, I'll link all of the things that I bought on Amazon for you so you can buy these for yourself. Step two is that you're gonna install your drives and Ugreen makes it really easy with these trays. There's just like a little clip that you open, you drop the drive in, close it and push it in. It also has a lock as well if you wanna use that. And one thing I'll say about installing the SSDs is that it comes with the hardware necessary, like a little screwdriver to screw it in, whatever that's great but I wasn't expecting they have these like heat dissipation pads that you need to put on the SSDs I would say like based on my research online definitely use these even though I'm like I'm sticking something to this SSD and that seems counterintuitive so it was odd for me but um, I ended up doing it and they are running cool you can manage your temperatures in the Ugreen software step three I plugged in the power to the NAS step four I had to buy a network Wi-Fi extender I just plugged that into the wall it took me about five minutes on my phone through an app to set that up if you have an ethernet cable already in that room that's really easy uh, you can skip this step step five super simple plug that ethernet cable into your nas step six you're going to download the software and follow instructions from the ugreen site step seven you need to set up hard disk drive storage pools and this is pretty easy through the software so in your setup process it's going to ask what kind of raid system that you want and you just click the one you want for me i went went one to one so essentially it's the 12 terabytes on one is going to dual backup always onto the second one so I have redundant recording step eight you're gonna plug in your two and a half gigabit network switch step nine you're gonna run an ethernet cable from your network switch into your NAS step 10 is you're gonna take another ethernet cable and you're gonna run it from that switch into a USB-C to ethernet adapter and then you plug it into your computer and sorry, step 11 was plug it into your Mac. I could have skipped that one. Step 12 is a big one because this wasted like 30 minutes of my time. Um, I was trying to chat GPT why I couldn't sign in. And essentially I was using the wrong like network address or connection. Um, so ensure that you're using the right one for like the direct plugin from the ethernet of the 2.5 gigabit network. Wow, I kind of sound like a pro now. The total time from unboxing everything, installing the hard drive, setting it all up was about two to three hours. What I'm learning is unique about the DXP 4800 plus is like that you can use the HDDs, but you can also have like the solid state hard drives, like those NVMEs in the bottom. Um, and for me, this just allows like my editing workflow to be a lot better so I can have like my hot storage on the SSDs, which is like I'm running an edit um, from like a project file and I need that to be accessible and fast. Uh, but then when I'm done with that and I do my final exports, I can take all of that, all of the project files and I can 
and put them into my cold storage, which is the hard disk drives. And this is where I start to save money from storing. Another unique thing about this NAS is it does have those two ports. Um, a lot of NASes have like older NASes have like a one gigabit uh, network input, but this has like a 2.5 and 10 gigabit. So as your network or wherever you take this, as it like grows and you start introducing like faster networks in your office or at home, um, you can like grow with this NAS. So as mentioned, my system is now pretty dialed going forward as a business owner. I have memories from Indonesia and Jordan, and I was recently in Norway. These are lifelong precious memories for me. It's not just about the client projects and backing those up. It's about having like insurance for my creative life. Some of the coolest things that I didn't expect with having a NAS, because this is my first one ever, was that like it crushes for upload speeds in comparison to say like a Google Drive. And I currently pay a monthly subscription for that and I'm able to cancel that now. So it's like further saving me money on storage. The second thing is that if you use a Mac, you know that the spotlight feature, if you're just trying to find stuff on your computer is a nightmare. And I can't believe they haven't figured this out yet, but there's an album assistant um, built into the software that Ugreen offers. And it allows you to like kind of uses AI to find people and places. Um, so yeah, that was actually pretty sick too. Another big thing is that in my business, I'm traveling a lot and I need to be able to like remotely upload files and I can do that so that my editor can like get started on the project before I'm even home from like another country. Um, so for me, that's like super valuable. And lastly, just on a personal level, they use something called NAS Sync, which allows me to like even on my phone, um, if I have like movies and photos and TV shows and stuff like that on the NAS, um, I can just be at an airport if I have a connection there and I can watch these files like remotely. So if I can set this up without breaking anything, I think you can definitely do it too. It doesn't take as long and once it's set up, it's actually saving you in the long run on your hard disk drive space because then like for someone like me who is always operating off SSDs, that gets so expensive. Check the link in the description to get 20% off and thank you so much for being here.